<laughs> You're live. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us today. We have a very special guest and uh, the man from Salt Lake City, the man and the legend, Jason Critchfield himself, <laughs> our coach, who's been coaching uh, our team in real estate sales in the last several years. Grateful to have him on. Just been a great mentor and a coach, and I've learned a ton from him. And we thought we could share some value with you as far as his insights, not only into how to be a great uh, realtor and how to build a great right. team, but also investments and many other things like building a team and establishing a brokerage. So we're just really glad to have you on. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for your time. Arthur, Tim, excited to be on with you guys. Like you guys are doing such phenomenal stuff over there when you were like, Hey, you want to be on? I was like, absolutely. Let's, let's, uh, let's make sure we're bringing some value and answer some questions for people. And you know, like you say, Arthur, all the time, it's like, how do you level up? You know, there's always that next year. There's always that next level in life. And, and what I found and not to jump into anything too specific, but really just modeling people who have, who have done what you want to do and figure out how can they help you a shortcut to get there. Right. Well, you've, you've done it all. So you, you know, best. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so not, That's not all my answers. answers. <laughs> so, well, a few answers we're looking for right now is, you know, we have a few questions we want to ask you. Uh, so yeah. first of all, tell me about how you got started. Uh, what, what, what are some things that you had to overcome when you first got started in real estate, you know, hundreds of years ago? Yeah, totally. Right. <laughs> so I did, I got my license, you guys, when I was like, I was like 22 years, 20, was I 22 years old? Uh, and my wife said, Hey, honey, I'm pregnant. And at that time I was going to the university of Utah and I was like, man, I got to get me a real job. So I thought, well, I'll get my real estate license. That's a real job. Right. But I, I didn't know anybody that had been in real estate. Like the closest thing I'd, I'd gotten to that was my dad, who was a real estate investor who bought to hold uh, rental properties, right? And uh, so that was kind of, the, the, I think the thing that drew me to real estate in the first place is like, I want I to do something that I can learn and not only figure out how to make a living, but also how to figure out a, a way to create a retirement for myself like my dad did, right? So then... Uh, I jumped into real estate and uh, I realized pretty quick that I did not know how to make a living in real estate. Like my first, my first year, all I knew how to do was prospect because I'd served a mission for my church. So I went to Brazil and for two years I had to knock doors, talk to people and be like, Hey, do you want to, you want to hear about a message about uh, Jesus Christ? Right. And like, once I got that script down, I was like, well, that, that should be, Fisbo should be a lot easier than knocking on strangers door and talking about the gospel. Well, so, I mean, but that is, you know, being able to door knock and being able to talk to people in person and be able to have a conversation with people just from talking to you, you know, that seems like that's one of the number one qualities, the number one things you have to be able to do to be successful in real estate. And you got to be willing to make the calls, be willing to, to, to talk to the people and engage. You yeah, know? brother, you cannot be a secret agent, right? And that's what people do all the time. Oh, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll, I'll just be a secret agent when people need me, then, right. uh, you know, I'll, I'll do something. Yeah, I always tell a, a joke. You guys know what the difference between a pepperoni pizza and a real estate agent is, don't you? No, what, what? is it? A pepperoni pizza can feed a family of four. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and the only, the only reason why I share that with you guys is not to rip on real estate agents because I love them and I am one. But it's like, you've got to decide what type of realtor you want to be, right? And, and it, but it's the same thing. It, paral it, it parallels life. So like you look at, at sports, like you've got great athletes and terrible athletes, right? And the common de denominator a lot of the times is just how much effort, how much practice, how much discipline do they put into their craft, right? Yeah. And so when I got into real estate, started calling for sell by owners, like literally the first two weeks of making a call, I call this lady. I said, hey, I'm a real estate agent. I want to see if I could come talk to you about helping you get more money out of your house. And she was like, yeah, you can come over. So I went over and she's like, okay, I like you. I'm going to sign with you. I didn't know how to fill out a listing agreement. So I had, her, I had her sign a blank contract and I took it back to my broker. I'm like, hey, how do you fill this out, right? But unfortunately, where I got off track with that is that I didn't stay consistent enough in that activities. So for the next three or four years, I, I was making a living. I was making more money than I ever had before, uh, which wasn't hard to do as a college student. But then I got invited to join a brokerage called Realty Executives. And the, one, and, and the broker of that company was a one-on-one -on -one coach for Mike Ferry. And I'm a coach for Tom Ferry. So Tom, Mike is Tom's dad, right? But this guy brought me in and really laid out my ideal day. Like, what, 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 what should I be doing? Not only like for real estate, but just to make sure that I was competing at the level that I should be competing. So what time are you waking up? 
what are you doing first things in the morning to make sure that you're, that you're learning, that you're growing, that you're starting out on a positive note, right? Are you meditating? Are you practicing? Are you getting ready to show up in the office in like that same mental state that basketball players, professional ball players do when they go touch the court, right? It's like, they're ready to go. Sure. They've prepared for that. See, Arthur, Arthur had recently mentioned, uh, you know, morning affirmations, Uh, you know, the importance of thinking positive when you first start your day, you know, Mm -hmm. what what can you tell us about that? You know, and I talked to Arthur's brother, he was talking about uh, (laughs) mindfulness and it's the same thing. You you go in, right. And and I've heard all these amazing stories about people who practice mindfulness, who just achieve all their goals and, and just crush everything that's set in front of them. Yeah. In fact, Arthur's got you guys. And and Tim, that's a really good point because you guys have the 1800 challenge, which is one that I'd recently sent out to you guys where it's like, look, do these six things every day for the next 30 days and see the benefit in your life, right? Wake up on time consistently. Make sure that you're meditating. Make sure that you're doing at least 10 minutes plus of exercise every single day. Make sure that you're reading or listening to a book at least 10 minutes every single day. So it's like 10, it's six activities, 10 minutes at a time. Writing your gratitudes, doing your affirmations. Um, I think we're the other two that I haven't mentioned so far, but you guys, I know you guys can send that out if anybody wants a copy of it. It's kind of a fun, a fun deal, but that's what I did. You guys, I started waking up, I'd get my exercise in, I'd hit the gym every, or I'd hit the, the office every day by seven 30. Right. And then at seven 30 on the dot, I would do my first page of affirmations. And we do this with a group of 10, 15, 20 agents in the office. We'd go through our affirmations and then we'd role play from seven 30 to eight every single day, Monday through Friday. Okay. And what I noticed is about six months after joining that company and doing that every day, chatting through the scripts, role playing the scripts, practicing the scripts. I had about 38 pages of scripts memorized verbatim within the first six months I hit that company. And I was the guy when I, when I would get on the phone and start to, to try to handle objections when I was calling, when I was calling people, I would go ask my broker, like, hey, what would you say to this? And like, every time without fail, some amazingly articulate thing would roll off his tongue. And, and I'd, be, I'd look at him, I remember looking at him going, Man, I just don't, I can't do that. Not like that, right? Like, that's too well said, too fast, too great. <laughs> but the interesting thing, after having practiced that skill and working on those scripts, within about a year, I became that guy that like, I could say it just the way people wanted to hear it. I, I had a, a way to help them through their objections, no matter what they were. And that's where I really saw my momentum pick up. So because of that schedule, showing up every day, 730, working on those skills, then I'd be on the phone every day from nine to 11. And I went from being like the least disciplined guy on the phone from nine to 11 to the most disciplined guy at about 77 agents inside that brokerage. And that's where that next year, I doubled my best year ever. And then started to go on over the next... um, what would that have been over the next five years? I went on to start making in single months what I used to make in single years, right? So now we're talking about, um, you know, $100,000 plus months of commissions in real estate. That doesn't suck, does it? That's all right. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> so so my, my, talk about okay. the, the time, I mean, I, I hear all these, uh, these things. People say the best time to call is between what, like seven and nine or four and six. But yeah. you know, there's a between nine and 11, which seemed to be just as effective. So it kind of sounds like yeah. more of a myth than anything. Well, and, and I, I think the two that, I think the two that they have, have thrown out, there is like that eight to eight to 11 time frame, like somewhere in there. And again, that four to six, but it isn't so much about like calling. Am I calling during the optimal time? The key right. is to set up your schedule so that you can consistently hit that over and over and over again. Brian Tracy wrote a book called Eat That Frog, right? And in that book, he talked about identify the one or two things that are crucial inside your business that has to happen on a regular, a regular basis for you guys to grow and be doing better. And those are the one or two items that you're going to do first thing in the morning at the exact same time before life gets hectic and before you're out running on appointments. And so that's what I found is like the only time I could consistently do it for me and get everything else done that I wanted to with the workouts and practice was that nine to 11 and it made me hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like I had, I had tracked my numbers, you guys. So I had figured out that every time I hit a digit on the phone, this was back in the day before dialers, right? You had to hand dial every single number, 
But every time I touched the digit, whether they said yes, no, they loved me or hated me. Um, every time I touched the digit, I made a dollar ninety eight on average for my prospecting. That's awesome. So I was like, and so that's kind of what I started looking at to be like, made a dollar ninety eight, made a dollar ninety eight, made a dollar ninety eight, right? Who's out there? They're home. They're happy. They want to talk to me. Somebody needs an honest, ethical, hardworking agent today. That's going to be me. Where are you? Right. Yeah. So, so we talked about the agent side and obviously you build a brokerage and you have like, what, like 300 agents working for you. You guys did yeah. billions of dollars in, in sales. So, uh, but let's, let's shift gears a little bit. So you, you, we talked a little bit about investing and getting mm -hmm. started, but high level stuff now. So say someone's making a lot of money, they're putting, they're bringing in a lot of income and now they want to diversify and they start getting some passive income. Like how did you yeah. make that, that shift? But, and into going into, you know, the more passive route through real estate getting investments yeah. and, and some apartments and, you know, you've got all kinds of stuff. I don't even know, but I'm just saying you've done a lot. And I just wanted to see what your, what your thoughts would be on something like that. Okay. Well, and that's why I love, that's why I love real estate. That's what initially got me excited about it. So why, when I got married, I'd been living in an apartment for six months. I was renting a, a studio apartment and I was like, this blows, right? Like, man, paying rent sucks. Yeah. And so I started thinking about, but I wasn't making that much money. Uh, and uh, so I, so I, I, I was looking like, I, could, I can't really go afford a, a big house right now for my, for my wife and I. So I started looking at apartments, duplexes and triplexes. So I ended up buying this triplex six months after I was married. We moved in one unit. We rented out the other two. Not only did I live rent free, but I was making $400 a month as passive income as a 22 year old kid. I know somebody who did that same exact thing. Yeah. yeah. And then that That's sprung me in, in that next one. A year <laughs> later, a year later, I bought the house I wanted to buy. I rented out one of the units or the unit I was living in. And now that the rents on that, that triplex paid both of my mortgage a hundred percent every month. And I was like, Ooh, that's nice. So then I just kept adding from there, add another duplex, bought a sixplex, bought a commercial building, lost my butt on the commercial building. That was <laughs> years and years ago. Right. But but, you know, I, I look at my dad right now and uh, I was telling Arthur this the other day, but he had he had a stroke. Right. We don't know how he's going to do or if he's going to be able to make it back from that. Oh, man. Yeah. But yeah. so just out of the blue, my mom has been taking care of him. She's got to take him to the bathroom. She's got to feed him like everything. Right. But she's like, Jason, I'm so grateful that your dad was smart enough to invest in real estate because like every month I get all those rent checks coming in every month. It just happens. And I don't have to worry about money. And I was like, absolutely, right? And so I think it's a, it's a really good avenue for people to create not only some passive income, some some residuals that they're going to be making. We call it mailbox money, right? Because hopefully this shows up in the mailbox. <laughs> well, that was back in the old days. Now it's like Venmo, PayPal. They don't have right. to stick it in the mailbox it's anymore. A account. Uh huh. But you guys, not only not only are rental properties great tax write offs, great tax write offs. If you're paying too much in taxes. You need to own some rental properties, okay? But two, you're going to create that passive income. And then three, you get, to, you get to enjoy the appreciation that happens. And it may be slow in some markets, right? Like I look in, in, in one of my properties, I just ran a CMA. And in the last four years, that property is out of 200000 in equity or in, in uh, my net worth, right? Just that one property alone. And even if, and even if it doesn't happen that fast yeah, for you. awesome. What if in 20, what, what, what if you have to hold on to it for 30 years to see that much uh, re return on your investment? That's okay. As long as it eventually gets there. Yeah. Excuse me. Leg gratification. So yeah, if, you, for sure. if you could give yourself, you know, now it's been 26 years, but if you can give yourself a tip mm -hmm. and you can go back and rewind the clock yep, and all the knowledge and skills you would retain, what's the number one thing that you would do to jumpstart, say you had nothing else, so you were broke, but you had all the skills and experience and knowledge. The day you found yeah. out your wife was pregnant, you, know, you <laughs> yeah, go back, then, back, back that day. Hey, guy, I would have been like, I, I heard the like, real estate. <laughs> yeah, I would have been. I would have told myself the joke about the real estate agent, the pepperoni pizza. <laughs> 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 no, honestly, I would have. I, I, I would have started out my career a lot smarter, right? So, really building a sphere of people. That, that you have an influence over or that know you or that should get to know you better and expanding that. Because the thing I love about real estate is you are helping people with some of their largest financial goals, right? Their largest financial assets. 
And it's really rewarding when somebody gets that new house, they get their first house, or they move up to their dream property. Like it is, ex it, it's exciting to be part of, of that for them because it's huge, right? But really coming back and saying, look, I'm going to build this sphere out wider. I'm going to get as many people as I know that need somebody that is knowledgeable in real estate, it's hardworking, it's honest, it's ethical, and make sure that they have an opportunity to use me. Um, and not so much just for my own, my own income, right? Like, like I know that we've talked about this with you too, Tim and Arthur. Like our goal is the, the more we help other people get what they want, the more we automatically get for ourselves, right? It, it's like, it comes back this way. And so that's what I would be focusing on. Just be like, just take care of people, make sure that I, make sure that I'm really tapping into that. And then, and then come up with systems in your business. It took me, it took me six years in real estate before I even had a CRM, right? Where I, where I put my customers in there and actually kept in touch with them and sent them stuff and reminded them that I was in the business and I, was, and I wanted to be their real estate resource. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of clients weren't able to come back to me because out of sight's really out of mind when it's in real estate. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know of some of them personally that had a terrible real estate experience. And I took blame for that because I was like, it's my fault for not staying in contact with people. Having a system to be able to track that and let them know you're still here, right? And then the other stuff I would have done is I would I really would have kicked my butt to be more consistent, more disciplined, faster. Like I ran into a guy one time. It was at a, a, a Tom Ferry deal back in, oh, when was that? That was, was a while ago, 2007. But he goes, hey, Jason, he goes, I have, I have prospected every day without missing a scheduled day of prospecting for the last 1,272 days. Like, Wrap your head around that. So you mean you didn't miss a single day of prospecting that you had scheduled and you're still going to take vacation and take time off, right? Those aren't scheduled days of prospecting. But I was like, man, what if I could do that? What if I, what if I decided to be that committed, that disciplined? And so that's where I went from like being yeah. one of the less disciplines to one of the more disciplines, disciplined agents in the office to where I was like, hey, it's what I want to do. Well, like, so why wouldn't I say consistent at it? So do you think it's just as important to call uh, your previous clients and people in your own personal sphere as it is to make new contacts? Or do you think it one outweighs the other? Yeah, I really go back to the core four, Tim, to where it's like, okay, um, the number one most important thing you can do in your real estate business really is stay in contact with your, with your past clients and sphere of influence. Right. And then make sure that they know that you want to be their resource. Like one script that I use all the time, you guys, and is I would just let people know, hey, you know, uh, you may or may not know this, but I'm in real estate. I want to be your real estate resource. Let me tell you what that means. If you ever want to know this, 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 I want to be that resource for you. And they're like, oh, that's cool. Right. So I started using that all over the place early on in my real estate career. I sold the pizza delivery guy that bought a pizza, pizza, pizza to my house, <laughs> uh, a house with that with that script the cop that pulled me over on the freeway i was like oh, sure, you don't know this but i'm in real estate i'd love to you know i think you do a great job i want to return the favor right let me be a real estate resource he's like what does that mean i told him he's like <laughs> we totally want to get we do and so he re he bought a house he referred to me six other cops that same year too so then i started speeding everywhere everywhere i went to get pulled over more didn't work out as well that time. <laughs> <laughs> for a good story right there. Started doing the B and E's and leaving your card. That's prospecting. Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> number number two is so that's your that's your sphere. Number two is open houses are a really good way to make sure that you're you're meeting people, having a chance to talk to them, get those leads. But the next one is that prospecting portion. Number three is that prospecting. Like who are you calling every day? Are you calling on investment properties? Are you, are you calling or income property owners, absentee owners, for sale by owners, expired? Because I really believe all of these people that we call, we, we can bring value, right? Like you look at like the for sale by owner, everybody's like, oh, I don't need an agent. The market's so hot. Yeah, but Mr. For sale by owner, by not listing it and, and putting the marketing power of, of Arthur and Tim to, to use for you, you're leaving eight, you're leaving to eight, nine, 12% in some cases on the table that we could have gotten for you that you won't get now. So it's not, can you sell it right now? It's like how much more of a full price can you sell it? 100%. And we're getting multiple offers and we're getting that price up and we're fighting for the appraisals. So, I mean, yeah, you just had to fight multiple appraisals. Oh, that's the story for another day right there. I'll have to tell you about that. Oh. Yeah. 
FHA. Yeah, totally. But we're not afraid to work for it. You know, we're not afraid to make it happen. We'll go to so, war. We'll go to yeah. war for this appraisal. You guys do. You guys do a great job for your clients. And that's what they people need right now is they need warriors because it is. There's it even though the market's really hot, it does create other problems and issues that you need somebody like you guys watching the ball. Well, I mean, attention. I'm kind of seeing a lot of things kind of bound back now. I mean, well, we're seeing a lot of appraisers kind of push back now and say, you know, you're going to have to challenge this, you know? So mm-hmm. when you get someone who has experience doing that, that's, that's where we can really add some value. Yeah. But yeah. I, I wanted to ask you this question. I don't think I've, as long as we've known each other, I don't think I've ever asked you this. How much commercial real estate do you do? Do you do a lot of commercial real estate or mostly residential? Mostly residential. Really? I, I do. I do like commercial. Um, and, and, uh, but, but honestly, it, it's just been kind of like every now and then it's never been one that I've really focused on. The really? thing that I am passionate about is land. I love land. I love land development. I love taking nothing and creating something out of it. Like that's one of my passions. Right. And so um, apartments, land, a, a lot of the stuff that I have bought and or sold in the apartment realm, like the 30, 40, 60, 60 unit apartment complexes, um, those are commercial Right. But I still sure. classify them as, as multifamily commercial, not like office, retail, that kind of stuff. Right. Right. Not like warehouses yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah. going to ask you, like, if, if there's any type of script or any type of tips you would give to have the conversation to get those commercial real or commercial real estate deals. So, yeah, I mean, that, that is a good question. We certainly could. We, we certainly could brainstorm that a little bit and come up with some stuff. But for me, guys, like like I, I, I said, I love the income property stuff. Like I'll, I'll call through the list of just like four rent properties. Right. And I'll just be like, Hey, I'm calling one of the Elm Street. Is this the owner? Yeah. Hey, I see your properties for rent. Right. Hey, I want to just touch bases with you real quick. Market's super hot. Have you guys ever thought about selling or doing a 1031 exchange with that property? Right. 1031 lets them know that, you know, something about at least the right. investment side of stuff. And they're always like, Nope, no, hey, that's fantastic. So let me ask you, how long have you owned this property? 27 years. Well, now I know something about this guy, right? He's completely depreciated out that property. And we ought to be talking now about like, is that your retirement dream property? What did your retirement strategy look like? Or did you want to have, did you want to have more properties down the road? Right. And so, so often that can lead to a place where a guy's like, I'm really glad we talked today. Cause yeah, I could sell that property, do a 1030 change and we lost your audio. Oh my gosh. Here, am I back? Yeah, you're back. <laughs> Somebody called. Um, and then, and then, and then go, you know, go, go move them down the road to get closer to where they want to be with their retirement, with their retirement goals. Okay. Okay. Yes, do, is there a lot of people retiring and moving to Salt Lake city, Utah, where you're at and your team is. Say that again. Are there a lot of people moving in a net migration into like Salt Lake city? Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Is there a lot of vacation and stuff like that? Things to do and stuff like that. You know, we've got amazing skiing. We've got amazing mountains we've you know we're, we're a big outdoor enthusiast state and so if you want a lake if you want a bike if you want to ski this is the, this is the place to come uh we were down our tourism was down quite a bit like everybody else was this last year but our economy is so strong and our our local government has made a lot of really good choices and so we're getting a ton of people moving to utah right now too many <laughs> <laughs> well if we have anyone that's interested in moving to salt lake city you know who we're going to be referring Jason Critchfield and his team, they do a great job. Been doing it a long time. Really knows the ins and outs of the game. So definitely appreciate you having, allowing uh, your time and spending some time with us. And just grateful to, to have your insight. Hopefully this was some, some value for, for our viewers. Well, I guarantee it will. And uh, drop some questions. If you got some questions, we can hook you up with Jason. If you have any questions, if you're interested in some, some coaching, some mentorship. And he's just a great guy. So look him up. He's on social media, Jason Critchfield. Where else can they find you? How can they reach you? They got questions. That is, a, that is a good question. I should have come a little bit more prepared with, uh, with the answer, but Jason is J-A-Y-S-O-N. There's not a whole lot of those. So you'll probably be able to find us that way. But same thing with you guys. Like you guys, I, I have really enjoyed working with you too because your commitment to your clients, your hustle, your know-how, you know, the fact that you guys get the deal done, even when it gets challenging and help people go accomplish their goals and their dreams. So man, I mean, your, your state's lucky to have you guys. And if, if anybody needs some really good realtors, those are the two guys right there. Use them. Light them up. Man, we appreciate that, Coach. And one more question I forgot. It's a good thing Styles brought it up. 
PPP money, is it is it a lot of money? Are you getting some of this PPP that's available? I, I, I haven't. I know quite a few realtors who have. Um, and so I always, I always do look at it. I'm like, oh, hey, but we've been doing so well, right? Like the business has been growing. Even last year, it was the best year we ever had in real estate. So for me, we haven't had to dip into any of that or, or, or do any of it. But it, it makes sense. Um, and there's quite a few realtors have gotten, I've seen that have gotten 30, 50, 60,000 bucks. Uh, one case, 200 grand. He was just putting, he just put in a little rainy day account in case he needs it, in case things get really tough for him. Right. Hmm. Yeah. To think about, well, that got you guys thinking. <laughs> What's that? I said, I'll have to take a look into it. Good thing, Stop. Yeah. We just got a little bit on one of our companies. So he wanted me to ask you that. So might as well. Insight. Yeah, you bet. Well, guys, subscribe to the page. If you have any questions, again, drop them below. And we thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next episode of Solomon Hustles. Yeah, Coach, good talking to you. You guys, too. Take Appreciate care. you Talk going, soon. Coach. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Have a good Bye -bye now.